Hey guys, welcome to another Essential Tutorial. So today I'm going to be using 3ds Max and Tieflow in order to simulate some cloth. And then I'm going to bring that simulation into NVIDIA Omniverse Create for rendering using the USD format. So to get started in 3ds Max, let's create a box. And this box is going to be our piece of cloth. So I'm going to set it by 350 by 350 by 2. And then you just want to make sure to set your length segments to something like 40 by 40. Uh, just something that's going to have enough resolution for our cloth. Uh, I'm then going to hold shift and duplicate this around our scene, just using a few copies and rotating it in a few different uh, ways, just so that there's a bit more variety in our simulation. Um, so you're gonna end up with something like this. You can kind of add or remove the amount of pieces depending on how long you want your sim time to be. So let's go ahead and create a type flow simulation. And I'm gonna use a birth objects operator. And I'm gonna select all those boxes we just created and use add selected. You can also instance the material if you have one on there. And then we're gonna use a cloth bind to operator. Now in here, I'm gonna change some of the settings under the bending stiffness. I'm gonna choose uh, 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, and two for the volume. And then you wanna make sure to enable the CUDA collision solver, self collisions, and self thickness. And that should be all you need just to get our initial cloth set up. Now to make it start to move, interestingly, we need wanna add some forces. So let's add a simplex force uh, on the noise one, and we wanna add some strength to it so it actually has an effect on our objects here. So I'm gonna set to something like 0.5 in the strength. And I'm also gonna use a surface force operator. Now this is gonna to be to attract the cloth near the center of the stage. Now we're gonna need an object uh, for it to attract too. So let's create a sphere with a radius of something like 27. And I'm gonna center that into our world. And to make sure it's not rendering, let's do not renderable and display as box by right clicking on that object. Now let's go ahead and add that sphere we just created into the surface force operator. And let's change the attraction uh, force to something like 0.2. Uh, with a bunch of variation and divergence and a slower acceleration. And then I'm going to just take off the display operator just so we don't see all of those particles, uh, just the objects themselves. So let's set the end time to a thousand so that we have more simulation to work with. And as I play through the scene here, now you can see it behaves like cloth and you kind of get these interesting forces affecting it. It's a really simple tie flow simulation to set up. Um, but this is kind of more of a mix of how you can get this export working in Omniverse. So let's export this as a tie cache. I'm going to generate the tie cache files here. And then I'm going to disable everything else in our scene. And just using this tie cache, let's add a turbo smooth operator. And that's just so we can add more polygons without it affecting the original simulation time within TieFlow. Now we're ready to go ahead and export this out as a USD. So let's select that tie cache object. And let's go File, Export, Export Selected. And I'm gonna export the Universal Scene Description, give it a name, and go Save. Let's set it from Current to Frame Range so that it exports the animation. And I'm gonna leave all these other settings the same, leaving it in the Z Up direction. Hit OK, and that's gonna go ahead and export it on your hard drive. So now we're ready to move into Omniverse. So NVIDIA Omniverse Create uh, is free to use, so uh, it's easy to follow along with this tutorial. Um, this is the original scene I was using for the simulation, but let's go create a new scene and I'll show you how easy it is to set this up. So let's go and open that USD we just exported. Just right clicking on it and going open. And there you go, there's our animated simulation. Um, but now to make it look interesting, I'm gonna do a few things like adding cameras, lightings, and animate a, a few things in order to make this look a bit better. Um, so in the environments tab, uh, NVIDIA Omniverse Create ships with a bunch of presets. So I'm gonna add this decor one and it just ships with this backdrop in this table. I'm gonna unhide the table here and just use this backdrop. And let's just increase the scale to something like three by three by three. I'm then gonna reposition it in the scene here just so that there isn't uh, so much, uh, or it's not so close to the camera. And then I'm gonna add some materials. So with the, one of the newest versions of NVIDIA Omniverse Create, it ships with these view materials, which are really handy and they look really good. So I'm gonna use something uh, just random like aluminum uh, for one side of the cloth, and then I'm also going to apply another material here, something like brass, to the other side. And then with the uh, the UVs out of uh, 3ds Max, it brought in a few different UV plates, so we can apply it to a bunch of the edges and the back and front of the cloth. Uh, but let's change the texture scale, just to give it a bit more detail here. And then I'm going to change it to interact or RTX interactive. Uh, just so that we have a bit more path tracing, path, path tracing samples. Sorry, 
Uh, so let's go ahead and apply that same uh, metallic material to all the other material slots here, uh, just so we don't have that uh, green edge. And now we're ready to add a camera. So let's uh, go create from view so we have a camera. And now before I change these settings, I'm gonna add some lighting. So let's create a rect light. And I'm gonna reposition that in my scene here. And then I'm going to disable the other HDRI that came in with that preset when we were adding in that backdrop. And I'm just going to play around with the height and width and the shaping. So let's move into the perspective as well, because I want to add some other lights here as well. Just pressing Control D, we can duplicate this and I can move this uh, duplicated light in our scene. And then I'm going to duplicate it one more time so that we have a total of three lights. So let's just reposition this last third light in the scene as well. So let's go back to our camera view and under the camera, or actually let's uh, take this HDRI and I'm just going to lower the intensity to something like 50 so that we can actually see that backdrop here. So let's go to the camera here and I'm going to play around with the f-stop and the focus distance just to kind of get some of that bokeh or depth of field. Um, one trick I like to use, I like to lower the f-stop to something really low, like 0.2, just so that I can see exactly where my focus plane is hitting. That way I can just kind of really uh, tightly dial in the focus. Once it's in a place that I'm happy with, I'll then increase the f-stop um, to a higher value, just so that it's not such an extreme depth of field. So in the post-processing, we can also add things like chromatic aberration. Um, in this case, I'm not going to use it. You can add motion blur. Uh, you can add bloom, you can do a bunch of color grading, all, you know, uh, complicated effects if you want to. These are just some of the basic ones that I tend to use. Uh, I'm also going to add global volumetric effects, which is kind of just adding in some atmospheric uh, lighting uh, or adding like smoke into your scene, basically. Um, but I just want it to be really subtle. So I'm going to lower the density multiplier down to something like 0.68. Um, so one other thing here, too, is just kind of enabling and disabling these lights. I can kind of see what effect they're having on our scene. I'm gonna go ahead and tweak some of the intensity uh, of those lights, and I'm also gonna tweak the coloring of them, just to give it a bit more variety in the overall uh, look of that lighting. So that looks pretty good to me. Uh, one other thing I did in the final animation that you saw there is that I also created an X-Form modifier, and I linked all my lights to it. Because what I did is I rotated those lights around in the scene over those 1,000 frames, just so that there's a bit more dynamic lighting happening. So how do we do that? So we can go and uh, reposition these just slightly here. I'm gonna go create an X form, and then I'm gonna select all those lights, and then I'm gonna drag it under that X form. Now you can see when I rotate that X form that all of our lights are now rotating in the scene. Cool, so let's add some keyframes here now. I'm gonna go to frame zero, and I'm gonna add a keyframe using that green key icon in the bottom right hand there. And then I'm going to go to frame 1000, rotate to something like 720 degrees, and then I'm going to right click and go set key, which is another way to do it. But you can of course go into the right hand corner and hit that set key button there as well. Um, so now our lights are animating. If you wanna change the curves on those keys, you can open the curve editor. If it's not already open, go to window animation curve editor. And in the curve editor, we can zoom extents or select all the keyframes and then zoom extents so we can see them, select them. And if you wanna change it to linear, um, you can just select the linear icon uh, there. So now our keyframes are set for our lighting. We could of course animate any parameter. We can of course animate any parameter in our scene. Uh, but for this one, I'm gonna go to the camera and I'm gonna add just some keyframes for the position of our camera. So let's go to frame zero and animate a keyframe on frame zero. Then I'm gonna zoom to frame a thousand uh, after moving my camera and add another keyframe again. So now our animate our camera is animated and everything is looking pretty good to me. So that's pretty, pretty much all I had to do. I set up a few cameras and I rendered out the sequence. Once you're happy with how it looks, um, you can of course render this out. Um, so what I did is I rendered out a few shots using the rendering movie capture tab. And here you can set which camera is rendering. You could set uh, your frame range. Uh, you could set your resolution, in my case, 1080p. And you could set it to RTX interactive path tracing. So I set it to 64 samples. Then I set an output path and I gave it a name. And then I changed it from PNG to .exr format just for that extra bit depth. 
So that was everything I had to do. Um, there's a lot you can do with this. I recommend playing around with the different view materials. You could, of course, use custom materials or, you know, materials built within Substance Painter, for instance, using the connector from NVIDIA Omniverse. Lots of interesting, cool ways you can do this. Um, but everything I did was rendered out and then brought into After Effects for compositing. And that was it. That's all I had to do. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something and I will see you next time.